So here, as you can see, this is the input power. This is the charge IC, as you can see. Here we have the coils, inductors. As you can see, we have PE. This is inductors. The 19 volt should pass through these inductors and then should pass through this MOSFET and then this MOSFET and then goes to this resistor. This is current sense resistor. And then from here, the 20 volt will be distributed to the whole motherboard. As you can see here, we have one circuit. As you can see, here we have another circuit. As you can see, here this is another circuit. We have here another circuit. Here also we have another circuit, as you can see. So here also we have another circuit here, as you can see. We have a power management IC, as you can see. We have MOSFETs. So always when you find a group of capacitors with inductor means a circuit. Okay. So here, as you can see, we have capacitor, we have inductor, we have MOSFETs, and this is IC. Okay. Here also, we have a group of capacitors here, we have inductors here, we have IC. So this circuit is for the processor. Always the circuit of the processor contain many capacitors. Okay, so this is the circuit for the processor and this is the CPU management IC. Okay, here also we have another circuit. Okay, and here also we have another circuit as you can see. Okay, we have inductor, capacitor, inductor, capacitor, and here we have the IC. So this seems to be the 3 volt, 5 volt system power because we have two inductors, one inductor for 5 volt and another for 3 volt. Okay, so before going and diagnosing the motherboard, always when you get a failed motherboard, a dead motherboard or a motherboard with no data or no power or no light first thing to do is a visual inspection okay so always you should make a visual inspection but first let's remove this the fan and the head sink in order to be free in the motherboard so to remove this we can just remove these screws as you can see the screws for the fan, as you can see. So we will remove this fan in order to be free in the motherboard, in order to see all components. Okay. So here we have the fan now is removed. As you can see, this is this is bad for motherboards. This can cause a graphical failure. So this should be cleaned in order to avoid to damage the graphic cards. Okay, this is bad for the motherboard. Let me first remove this dirt here. So now, as you can see, I have cleaned this heatsink. As you can see, now is clean. You can even remove the heatsink, okay, and wash it using water. No problem. But to remove the heatsink, you should pay attention to the screw number. As you can see here, we have here 1, 2, 3, 4, we have here 5 and 6. You should not open any screw randomly. No, you should always respect this order. First, you should remove this screw we have here one then two then three then four then five then six in every motherboard you will find the same working principle you can find just four screws or even six or more why because for example if you loosen the number three then number six then you can damage the head sink or even you can damage the processor or the GMC hedge. Okay, so always respect the order of screws. Okay, we have under this the processor, and under this part, as you can see, this is the GMC hedge, and this is the IC hedge. Okay, so the processor 
to GMCH or the North Bridge. And here, as you can see, we have the ICH. Let's unscrew these screws in order to check these chips. Okay, so let's begin with the first screw. Here we have one. So. Now we can remove the heatsink easily, as you can see. Okay, as you can see. This is the heatsink. So, as you can see here, this is the processor, as you can see. This is the processor. Here we have the GMC hatch. Okay, so this is the GMC hatch, as you can see. And here, this is the salt bridge. Okay, so the processor to GMCH and the third bridge. Okay? So, here, as you can see, this is the RAM slots. Okay? Here we have the RAM slots. So, the kind of this RAM is the DDR3. Why DDR3? We have here DDR3, as you can see, 1.5 volt. This is 1.5 volt. So, 1.5 volt is the working voltage for DDR3. So, for DDR3, the working voltage is 1.5 volt, and the VTT or the terminal voltage is 0 0.75 volt. Okay, so, this is DDR3. So, this is the processor, the GMCH to ICH. This is the RAM memory, as you can see. Here we have many circuits. Okay, so this is chemical capacitors, this is inductors. All those are inductors. Here we have MOSFETs. You can find MOSFETs in the shape with eight pins, also in the shape. This is a small MOSFETs, and also those are MOSFETs. Here, this is the IC power management IC. Here we have also another power management IC here, inductors, this is capacitors, as you can see. This is the network card, this is for the Wi-Fi, okay? Here we have the main power, okay? This is the cable that is connected to the power jack, as you can see. And here this is the charge IC that we 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 going to check, okay? As you can see here, in the other side, as you can see, so, on the other side, we have the CMOS battery. As you can see, this is the CMOS battery. As you can see, here, the other side of the processor. Okay, this is a chemical capacitor. As you can see here, this is the CPU I.O. This is the CPU input output. Okay, I.O. Okay. Usually, near to the super I.O., we have this IC. This is the BIOS, the basic input output system. And of course, here we have these connectors. Also, you should check all these connectors. This is the power buttons. This is buttons. Okay. So now, what should we do? We should first check these components using the multimeter. So let's put the multimeter to the continuity option and then press the power button. So now, Let's check this component. We will begin with, we check the power cable. Now we will check this inductor, as you can see. So let's check the continuity first. The continuity is seated correctly. So now let's begin with the coils here. So as I told to you, the red wire should be connected directly to these coils, as you can see. Okay. So let's check these coils. This is a good coil. The second coil is good. Then 20 volt will pass through these coils and then goes to this MOSFET. So let's check this MOSFET. Will pass through these coils, as you can see, and then goes to the drain of this MOSFET. This is drain. Okay. So here we have drain. This four pins are connected together as you can see because this is drain here this is source why because we have this dot here this point here means this is the first pin 
this is the second pin and this is the third pin always the three pins are for the source okay using this point we can know that this is the first pin so the first pin the second and the third always is the source in every mosfet and the fourth pin is for the drain 